Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Captain Landon McGee with Nomad Fishing Charters and today I'm going to be performing some maintenance on the boat and this is one of the most important aspects of your boat which is the bilge pumps. Recently I had an issue with one of my bilge pumps. The auto switch uh, seems to not be working. Now that could usually be one of two things. Either the switch itself is bad which is what I suspect in this case or one of the connections has uh, deteriorated and I may need to uh, redo that connection. Like I said, I've had that switch for quite a long time, so I think it is the switch. I, I feel like the connections are probably pretty good, but I'm gonna check them anyway and make sure that's not the case. On my particular boat, I have two bilge pumps. One is fully automatic. The other is the what I call the old school method, which is the float switch. Uh, I can run them both manually or automatically, and that's how I suggest you have it on your boat. You're not always paying attention to the bilge or how much water you have in the bilge. You may forget to turn it on, but with the float switch, it kind of saves the day and it'll turn on whenever you have an issue. Um, so I, I'm gonna be taking you through a step-by-step -step process on how to replace this. Before we can start troubleshooting, we have to cut all of the tie wraps off and undo all the wires. That way we can isolate them. In this case, all the wires are together in sort of a, I guess you can call it a harness. Um, so I'm cutting them free and I'm gonna separate the wires uh, for each pump. These flush uh, wire cutters uh, help a great deal, not just for removing the old tie wraps, but also for trimming the new ones that I'm going to install at the very end. You don't leave any sharp edges. As I start to undo all the wires and separate them, I find the cause of the problem. As you can see here, the bilge pump wires are a little too short, so I'm going to lengthen them, which is going to require me to pull the bilge pump out and add a couple of pieces of wire, so it'll make it a little easier to, to reinstall that, uh, that pump switch. I'm going to remove the hose clamp and uh, I'll probably end up just installing a new clamp. This clamp looks like it's got a little corrosion on it, so I'm going to upgrade the clamp to a better quality clamp. We're going to use a couple of marine grade butt connectors. Uh, these are 14 gauge. We're going to use to uh, connect the new wire extensions. I didn't have the same colors, so I'm using, I basically found whatever I had in my tool bag that was close to it. I'm using an orange for the brown and a green for the black, which I'm going to just uh, tape over with some black tape just so I can identify it in the future. It's not really a big deal as long as you know which is which. Like I said, I'm going to take this green wire, it's a 14 gauge, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it with some electrical tape just so I can identify it as the black wire in the future.
Now that the wires are longer, I can work a little more comfortably inside the building. Now I'm going to trim that short piece of wire coming off the float switch just to get down to some cleaner wire so I can make a better connection. These hoses become very rigid over time, so it's sometimes necessary to heat them up a little bit so you can slide the pump into the hose. Now that the hose is safely secured to the pump with a brand new clamp, I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the base. You have to line it up and then snap it in. Sometimes it can be a little difficult, especially if the hose is very rigid. Alright, before I make my connections, I want to make sure that everything is nice and dry, so I'm going to take a tie wrap and just temporarily fasten these wires. I'm using this hose up here on the top of the screen. I'm just going to kind of hold them on there, tie them on there, so I can make my connections and keep everything dry. I'm going to also take a towel and just dry the ends, make sure they're nice and dry, and then I'm going to probably trim back about a quarter inch of wire, make sure everything is nice and dry before installing the butt connectors. Although you can't really see what I'm doing here, I'm actually just stripping the ends of the wires where I'm going to make my connections. I'm going to be using two sizes of butt connectors. I have to use a 14 for the wire to wire connection and then I'm going to have the other connection that's also going to include a piece of the wire for the float switch. So in other words I have to have two wires going into one butt connector. For that one I'm going to use the larger butt connector. I believe it's a 10 or 12. It's a yellow size. Uh, I'm going to twist the wires together and slide it in there and then I'm going to show you a little uh, tip to help seal it. As it turned out, the wire coming off the float switch was a little too short to work with, so I had to trim back some of the sheathing on it, the white sheathing, uh, using a straight edge blade. Um, this is really uh, difficult, especially when you're working inside the build. You have to be very careful and very patient not to cut yourself and to also not damage the wires. So here I was able to just cut, it, cut into it just enough where I could peel it back and give myself a little more room to work with. As you can see there was a little bit of water in the bilge and as soon as these two wires came together the pump turned on and was ready to pump. Now I'm just going to join the two wires together the best I can and then they're going to go inside the butt connector. Once the last connection is made, I'm just going to go ahead and manually activate the pump, make sure everything is working, and then I'll go ahead and button everything up by using tie wraps and just folding everything back nice and neat.
it doesn't hurt to test it again. Here's another tip. Because you have two wires going into one butt connector, you're never going to get a perfect seal. So what I like to do is use a little bit of liquid tape and just put it right over the wires, especially when the two wires come together. You always end up with a little small gap there. So if you can get brush that in there and get it in good, it may just help you know lengthen the life of the wires. And like I said, you never get as good a connection when you have two wires on the same connector. But this, I, I believe this does help in the long run. Now it's time to go in and just button everything up with tie wraps and just make it nice and neat. When doing this, I recommend you place your wires as high as possible. You want to keep them out of any standing water. Finally, I'm going to go in there with the shear cutters and just cut off all these tie wraps. These cutters are especially useful because they don't leave any sharp edges that will cut you when you stick your hand in the bilge. May they make a nice clean cut. Well guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something new. Until next time, my name is Captain Orlando Munguiz with Nomad Fishing.